In this video, I'll talk about Ankylosaurus starting with its history of discovery, and I'll give a description and talk about how it evolved. The first specimen of Ankylosaurus was found in Hell Creek in 1906. While ankulos means bent or crooked in Greek, the dude who described it was referring to ankylosis, an abnormal stiffness and joint from fusion or, or something. So instead of crooked lizard, ankylosaurus means something closer to stiff lizard. Still kind of funny. Uh, I mean, this is very serious science. The dude who discovered it was Barnum Brown, by the way, a very famous paleontologist for his time. I feel like I should mention the discoverer in these videos. I mean, they're dead, so it's not like they care, but I feel bad I didn't include their names before now. They reconstructed it using their idea of Stegosaurus for the missing pieces, which was also wrong, so it's multiple levels of wrong. But yeah, that's why it's missing that signature tail club. They didn't even know it existed yet. Ankylosaurus was described better in 2004, and people figured out it looks super weird and probably isn't representative of most Ankylosaurs. Kinda like Spinosaurus. For one, it's the largest known Ankylosaurid at about 7 meters long and weighing 5 to 8 tons. It also had nostrils that pointed sideways rather than forward. That might have to do with anything from rain to vocalization. While it was found with lots of iconic dinosaurs like T-Rex and Triceratops, Ankylosaurus seems to have been somewhat rare while it was alive. Ankylosaurus was a browser eating pretty much any plants it could find. The tail club could have been used to defend from predators or for interspecies combat. Either way, it could break bones. Ankylosaurus had lots of fused bones to increase its strength, so I'm thinking this dude was built. The skull is wider than it is long, and the brain case is small but sturdy. It probably wasn't very smart, I'm thinking it was kind of like a rhino. Even if it wouldn't eat you, it's probably more dangerous than a Tyrannosaurus. I don't have a source for that though, I'm just thinking out loud. A lot about Ankylosaurus is still unknown though, like huge parts of the postcranial skeleton, such as feet, pelvis, and tail. We can guess based on other Ankylosaurus, which is probably fine. They probably had three toes in their hind feet and longer back legs than forelegs. An example of how variable stuff like that can be in a clade like that is in dog form carnivorans. Wolves and bears in general are similar in more ways than they're different, but their feet specifically are super different. Bears walk plantigrade like us, while wolves walk digitigrade, which just means on their toes. The skull and spine of Ankylosaurus show evidence of big muscles holding up its massive head, which is why I opted to draw it with that hump. It also looks cool as hell. Of course, Ankylosaurus also has armor, of which we don't fully know the orientation. My art is vaguely based on the best guess based on other Ankylosaurids. The closest relatives of Ankylosaurians are Stegosaurians, which were more diverse in the Jurassic. They both combined to make the clade Thyreophora, which means shield bearers. Shield bearers? More like shield dinosaurs, am I right? Kill me. <laughs> Thyreophora have osteoderms, which are those bony growths in the skin. They have smaller than average brains and their forelimbs are markedly shorter than their hind limbs. I can relate. Thyreophora is the sister group to Neoornithischia, the latter of which contains Marginocephalia, which is Ceratopsians and Pachycephalosaurians, and Ornithopoda, which is stuff like Iguanodon and Hadrosaurs. I can't believe I said all of that in one try. All of that is within Genosauria, which is within Ornithischia. Ornithischian dinosaurs are a mainly herbivorous group of dinosaurs classified by their hips. Their pubic shaft, no, not what you're thinking, faces backwards like modern birds instead of forwards like Sariscian dinosaurs. Weirdly, birds are actually Sariscian and they just have weird hips. A cool thing about Sariscians is that a super basal one called Coolindedromius was covered in fuzz that may have been related to feathers. This could mean that fuzz is a basal trait of all dinosaurs, or even Avimidosaurosaurians, or even all archosaurs. So cool! I love fuzz! Woohoo! Anyway, that's all I got for this video. Check out my Patreon, which you can subscribe to for a dollar a month to support me and get your name at the end of my videos. Thanks, Captain Kobop, Art of Dying, and Mr. Kill. At the point of me writing the script, I might actually get the video out on time. Thanks for watching! Bye!